Um, and drove into town. It was an entirely different community at that time than it is today. But I kind of fell in love with the whole the downtown, the Main Street hometown spirit. And so um, I've always found it interesting and challenging to learn more about it. So in 19, um, excuse me, 2014 and 15, I was asked by the city of New Prague to write a, a survey of the historic downtown along Main Street. And so my reconnaissance survey of downtown New Prague was written at that time. And as a result, I went into every business, every building along Main Street from the, would have been from the uh, waterworks and the power plant to all the way on the east to the west and what uh, today is um, the depot, uh, which is a kind of a gathering entertainment uh, venue. And uh, I had to go into each building and measure them. I had to, I made requests to access the basement so I could understand what type of foundation, whether it was rock or concrete or cement block. In some cases, I was not allowed in the basement. Um, I had to uh, discuss the exterior as well as the roofing and the history and the date, the ownership, everything from the soup to nuts. And, and I, as a result, I also had to measure each building. So through navigating the Sur County and Scott County, I was able to come up with many unanswered questions. Through that challenge, uh, I continued to learn more and more and understood that it's, the history of the Main Street is changing, as I said, daily. In 1867, uh, there was a wonderful quote that was uh, incorporated into the history of the community, whether it was a newspaper, I cannot remember exactly where I got it, but Thomas Abodney, which is a familiar New Prague na name, he left Bohemia and came to America in that year. When he arrived in New Prague, after walking through endless woods from Jordan, there was no church, and what was a rectory was like a cottage in Bohemia. There were two stores. The Mertz had a hardware store, such as could easily be carried on a wagon, and that was located where the Marquardt Jewelry building is today, the Oak building, where he traded with the Native American community. There was also a Shimmick, and he had a general store. The post office was a little wooden building, and it was named Oral. Mr. Vrabek, and I'll pronounce that correctly, my wife will correct me, Vrabek, was the postmaster. But I can tell you the people were very happy and neighborly to each other back then. The first uh, settlers that came into the community probably were challenged in so desired news from home, like we we do today, but it's an entirely different way we access news. But at that time, uh, when we wanted uh, when we wanted news from the old country, it took a long time for a reply. Several miles from my place, near the, what is sort of a road, there was a post office from which, in a tree, from which a wooden box was hung, where we put our letters and we received them without any supervision. Everyone was scattered far and wide from our little post office, and its safety was left entirely to the settler's conscience. To the credit of the settlers, no one disturbed our mail. This was written by Leute Vertisch, who was one of the first settlers in New Prague. And we, we were supposedly going to have a, on our display here on the screen, a photograph of that log house post office. It stood on the banks of Sand Creek near the um, Belzer Auto Dealership on the south side. It had two doors, 
two entries. One was the with Mr. Ashell, who was the postmaster at that time, and Mr. Vrabek lived across the street. The house is still there, tucked back into the woods, and the house is brick, made from handmade brick on the site. And uh, so that tree with that box was nailed to that corner. And what was also interesting was the fact that they would t take that mail and they would share it with the community. The community was very small. And they would read it aloud on the steps of the church after mass. And it wasn't gossip. It was just that desire to learn what was happening in their homeland. And because many family members were in, on their way at some point to join them, it was, a, it was an imperative that they had some idea of when the arrivals would happen. <clears throat> this is difficult because we don't have the slides and I apologize. Um, the slides that I had prepared this evening basically began with Main Street looking west. It was fascinating in the years that I've been here to see how the Main Street has changed from a, what they used to call chocolate pudding, a dirt road that wasn't paved, if you could believe it, until 1931. And when women stepped off the wooden sidewalks or whatever sidewalk was available, their boots would stick into the mud and then they'd leave the boots in the mud and then have to walk barefoot to the sidewalk. But this was a very common thing. So in that year, 1931, New Frank celebrated with the governor of Minnesota leading the march down Main Street with bands, flags, and a lot of hoopla. But just think about how difficult it was for uh, the residents who were entering part of this 20th century to uh, have uh, a primitive path to walk and, and to um, to navigate Main Street. As the town changed, uh, most of the buildings, the first photograph that I had to share with you was a photograph taken around 1870 and all the buildings were wooden framed buildings. And that changed in the latter part of the uh, 1990s when the city made a decision that all new construction had to have, be, had to be made out of brick because of fire. So the, all the buildings that initially were constructed in New Prague were made from handmade brick. An example of today would be the Tukowski building, the Laser Tukowski building, which is a doorway from the post office. All the brick was made in Mr. Jacques' brickyard, south of Main Street. And that brickyard uh, provided the brick for many buildings along Main Street. So most of them have been taken down. The clay that was used for the making of those bricks uh, was very soft. Uh, I mean, it was shallow. Were, it was dug in a very shallow uh, uh, portion of the ground, so it wasn't deep and did not provide the the type of brick that the Chaska brickyards provided, which then arrived in 1877 on the railroad. So that handmade brick is still what can be seen today in the depot, which on the west end of New Prague, and then, as I said, the Tukowski Laser Store. Um, offhand, um, I know that uh, there's a home nearby um, Main Street that is made of that, but it's been clad in, in vinyl, so you cannot see it. So once that, uh, when the railroad came in 1877, then they were able to build more permanent and more buildings with having better structure and more long lasting. There's always this uh, uh, conversation that even continues today how unfortunate it was that the Opera House was taken down, what would be referred to as the ZPG, ZCBJ Hall, Kitty Corner from the City Hall. And, uh, when that was raised in about 1973, um, the building was deteriorating. The wood had was infected with woodworms and, and there were little piles of sawdust on the floor and 
the brick was made for Mr. Makishka's brickyard just down the street. And uh, Mr. Makishka built a drugstore in Main Street, which is one of the photographs I was going to show you today. Um, and he, that was located to where the, um, it was a Mikas variety store. So some of you that are older residents might remember Florence Mikas' variety store. And essentially that was in the parking lot between the Tupi Insurance Building and what is today the uh, attorney office for uh, Warrenson and, uh, and uh, oh yeah, I can't remember who the other names associated with it. But it, it was, uh, again, made out of that soft clay. And so those buildings did not withstand the test of time. Going down my list, uh, one of the things I wanted to show you today was um, the farm the machinery day in front of the Mertz and Renner stores down at the west end of town. It's a fascinating photograph, and I, I do have many photographs that uh, parallel those on the display here tonight. And you're welcome to come up and take a look at them. But the west end of New Prague was probably more, just as active or more active commercially than anywhere else on Main Street. Mr. Mertz, who originated in Heidelberg, he was a German immigrant, he established this uh, wonderful commerce uh, center on the West End, but, and of course it was the railroad tracks that brought in all the, the machinery, the farm machinery, and all the things that people were dependent upon for their daily lives. So he brought into his business his son-in-law, Fred Renner, and Fred Renner and uh, Mr. Mertz established the um, commercial center, and then he brought in his son-in-law, Mr. Pani, and he, Mr. Pani, opened a saloon and opened up a bowling alley, and that bowling alley um, was uh, now where West End Liquor is located, and um, then um, next to that was another building that was a brought, brought, brought across the track, well, it was located, excuse me, next to the railroad tracks by the depot, and then it was moved across Main Street and put next to the Mertz building. It was the Bomber and Deutsch hardware store. That store was there when I moved to town in 1965. One thing that amazed me looking through the ledgers of the Vanasek hardware store was the fact that they were involved in moving buildings all over Hell and Creation in New Prague. They would move them back and forth, this way and that way. And unsurprisingly, many towns, such as Vesely as an example, when that uh, it was going through a period of time when the railroad went to Lonsdale, people began moving their homes from Vesely to Lonsdale. And today, or yesterday, I uh, had a conversation with two uh, family members of the Reebok family and identified a home that was brought from Heidelberg and it was just moved from Heidelberg. And remember, these were being moved by horses, but they just, it wasn't a tear down society and a throwaway society. They had to reuse buildings, whether they were, you know, if they were log, they just resurfaced them. And uh, there are homes in New Prague that are, that are log, but they're covered with a different siding that you would never really be able to uh, visualize or understand. The uh, Anton Philip home was made out of brick made on site. It was located to Mrs. Pawnee's house. Remember I mentioned the Pawnee Saloon? Well, Mrs. Pawnee lived right behind the car dealership on the west end of New Craig. It's a white house right next to the railroad track. And like that Bomber and Deutsch hardware store, which stood next to that home, and it, it was uh, called the Railroad House, and it was uh, Mac Tix, T-I-X, that ran that little hotel. And uh, Mrs. Pawnee uh, established uh, her home there. And uh, through conversation, she used to send her pigs down a wooden chute and wash them in the creek behind Casey's. That home was torn down. It had never been, it was never photographed. However, we do have on the slide uh, a drawing that was done, done by uh, Greg Przlitschka, a former art student of mine, 
who did a series of drawings during the bicentennial period, period for, note, uh, note, for note cards. And that's the only image that we have. It was a nice little house. I never, even at the time when it was torn down, probably uh, in the 80s, early 80s, it never had indoor plumbing. And uh, that was not uncommon in New Prague, but at that time period, it was unusual. It hadn't been uh, uh, modernized. Too bad that the historical society was not organized enough at that time and did not have the, have the means to save it. The, another building on Main Street, which I think is fascinating, is the Yoke Hardware Store, today's Mark Quart Jewelry. It was a, a very important uh, site, and that's where uh, Frank Mertz established his, built his log building that I talked to you about a minute ago, who built this, the, the log building and the store served the Native American community surrounding New Prague. These Native American people were of course, they, just like you and I, they needed substance, they needed supplies for their entry into this modern world, which they were being uh, absorbed into. And uh, he traded furs for um, the commodities that they were looking for. When Mr. Yoke built the building, a large imposing structure, um, it had a uh, odd fellows hall upstairs, a large expanse of area. And uh, one of the children of this Mr. Yelk was Mame. And Mame um, was a very bright girl. And like the families all along Main Street, business owners lived above or behind their businesses. It was, a, it was a culture and everyone became one and the same, one big family. She married a Mr. Cunningham who was, for a, who was employed at the mill. And he was an attorney and she left and moved from New Prague, but one of her sons, Merce Cunningham, um, is an internationally known modern dance choreographer, and the Walker Art Center had, within the last 20 years, a big retrospective of his work in dance performance, and anywhere in the dance world or performing arts world, you drop that name and everyone immediately knows who this is. And so she brought a lot of, uh, Tension to New Prague. The Vanasek family, uh, Helen Vanasek, and some of her cousins and family members went to one of his performances in the city, but he wasn't uh, very impressed and didn't give them the time of day, and they, came, they kind of came home disappointed. But that, uh, that period and that generation of kids, they were around the 20 years of age, 18, 28 years of age, uh, they were very entitled people. Uh, the mocks, as an example, and the Prosheks that ran the International House of the Hotel on Main Street, the Yokes, and others, um, they uh, were able to afford to buy handheld cameras. And to own a handheld camera, to buy film for a, a camera uh, such as that, and to develop, have that film developed, and sent away and developed, was exceedingly expensive. But we have in our collection a wonderful archive. Um, Jenny Proshek, Vanasik, um, did uh, put together a scrap of albums, some photograph albums, and it's a wonderful, wonderful chronicle of life of the, what these young people were doing during that time. They went out to Spring Lake and they picnicked and they boated and they went pulling up, they pulled water lilies from the lake and big bouquets and there wasn't any um, in any of the photographs, uh, maybe they drank a beer, I don't know, but they were all doing very respectful things and just enjoying being young before the next period in their life when they were dispersed and they went into becoming mothers and fathers and, and uh, leaving the community. Another important uh, building along Main Street uh, is the Peshek Hotel, the Merchant's Hotel next to the railroad tracks. I do not know what they call it today, but uh, it's kind of a, <laughs> the city did not give them a, uh, a, a green light to open up a business because of some of the business practices they had uh, record of in other communities. So I, don't, I do not believe it's, uh, 
open for business today. But um, it was a very important uh, building and uh, place to for young people to have the wedding receptions. Um, Jenny Mahold, Jenny Lane Mahold, when she married Alan Mahold, is it working? Um, was they had their wedding reception there, and above. Which is kind of interesting because today we would kind of look at it and think, ah, there was the park ballroom and that place was open for um, receptions and so on. But it wasn't the, uh, and, and then I look at it today, I just drove by there yesterday, I thought, yeah, this had to kind of reimagine what it might have been. It has changed. And like all of the business owners, as I mentioned, they live behind or above their businesses. In addition to that, many of the businesses on Main Street had dance halls. Dancing was one of the things that the local population loved. In the summer, they had outdoor pavilions. So where Kubish uh, furniture is, that was the pot, that was the, uh, there was a big dance hall in there in the summer. Behind um, downtown Sound, beyond the other side of the alley, uh, where the uh, Topka House was located. That, uh, before those buildings were built, that was a, a park, and they had an outdoor pavilion. Out at uh, Raven Street in the Oak Woods, there was a dance pavilion. And any opportunity the local population could find to enjoy and celebrate life, it was dancing. And so, as an example, the Topka building, which is the, uh, today it's uh, a flooring, is, is it the Hertz House flooring? Did I, is that correct? Well, the second floor was a big dance hall. And in, in that building, as well as the Reebok building on the corner, where the, uh, there's a business downstairs that's where they have bargain, bargain basement prices and items for sale. There was a dance hall upstairs in that building. And then today where the, they just recently opened a pool hall uh, business and bar, the old Red Lion, there was a dance hall upstairs. Um, it afforded in the winter time a place for people, these local citizens to celebrate. Each one of those, of those buildings, if you look at them as you drive by, will have a large window in the front, except for the, uh, the old red line, which has been removed. A large window, lower than the other uh, sequence of windows on that facade. They all had balconies. And the brass bands who played at these wedding receptions and the scarf dances or whatever dance they were conducting, they would advertise the dance upstairs by playing on those balconies. So I want, if you could just imagine on a warm summer night, walking down Main Street, not hearing any horns and traffic and smelling fumes from trucks and cars, quiet and maybe hear just a, the sounds of a summer evening, you hear the bass, brass bands and people would walk up and down the street and then patronize these um, different dances on the second floor. It was a magical time. And uh, we have in our collection, you will see some of them here on the table, photographs for those as well. Today, we, uh, I met Mr. one of the uh, members of the Westerman family that um, uh, visited us. Uh, it used to be, the Westerman Lumber Company used to be where the bowling alley is today. And uh, one of the photographs that I was to have included was a photograph taken from the mill looking uh, to the northeast over the mill pond and the Westerman Lumber Company. Another uh, photograph that I had to show you today was the first J, J, the J.W. Mock grocery store. And the Mock uh, grocery store was kind of iconic. It was, it, along Main Street, there were the three Dvorak, Dvorak brothers, Bill, Tony, and Emil, that had grocery stores. Uh, they were all in quiet competition with, with each other. They all had poppy seed grinders so the local people could come in and, 
and their pop by fresh grown poppy seed for making kolach or kolachki. Um, they always, also always made sure that someone on staff spoke Bohemian because the majority of the rural community were Bohemian speaking. Some of them, yes, did speak English, but you had that segment of the population that did not speak English. Like our neighbor, Mrs. Rose, uh, and who was a, a mail order bride from the Czech Republic, and she was brought here at age 15. She raised two daughters in New Craig. Her husband worked as an accountant at the First National Bank. But uh, she uh, w went into the store, the Simon's grocery store, or the Dvorak, Cor Dvorak uh, grocery store. They, they conversed in Bohemian. And that's how you navigated your purchases. Along Main Street as well, uh, Many women played a very important role in the development of the business community. Uh, Mrs. Topka, who uh, basically ran the, 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 well, the grocery store and the uh, Hertha's flooring business building, was very uh, hands-on. Uh, Mrs. Bollinger, Bertha Bollinger, uh, was uh, left widowed by her husband and uh, she had to support herself. So she opened up a business, a uh, cigar making business, next to what is the back and neck clinic on Main Street. And uh, she had to raise two children. Her grandchildren were Julius and Gilbert Bollinger, who established the creamery in New Prague, along with her father. And um, for some of the older residents in New Prague, that was a wonderful destination for their homemade ice cream. Um, along with her was Fanny Funda, and Fanny Funda took over the cigar making business from her husband, uh, who died. And what a wonderful name, Fanny Funda. You just couldn't resist smoking a, a stokey from her shop. Each shop, each of these cigar stores had to have a license. And in our collection, I'm not sure if, if we have that in a tangible form, but it was in the uh, slide presentation that we prepared. Um, she's standing out front with one of her children. And when I did a, a story about that family uh, in the front exhibit at the library, I was able to take that original photograph and enlarge it, and I could actually read the labels on the cigar boxes within the store. It was fascinating. They learned uh, cigar making in Bohemia. It's a cottage industry, and women had a different role in society, as you probably know. Uh, they had to work quietly behind the scenes, but they also uh, took that knowledge when they arrived on the shores of New York City. So my wife's family, when they entered in the Castle Garden in the, in the, in the lower, what we call uh, the Bowery, the, the old portion of New York City. They were in the ghettos. And today, of course, it's been replaced by the Chinese. But they had to take their knowledge in their um, two hands and to make a living in order to provide money in order to get to New Prague. So as an example, in my wife's case, uh, some were midwives, some were shoemakers, some were cigar makers, and they all took those trades to the Midwest when they moved to Minnesota and elsewhere and within the Midwest. So women played a role not only raising children, they, you know, there were no social services. And so the family had to take uh, people in or provide, uh, provide them with help and, and, uh, and sustain them until they got back on their feet. Another interesting store on Main Street is the Reba Rebox Confectionery. Previously, the Penner's Confectionery. Yesterday, I gave a tour to two of the, Pen of the Reebok great-grandsons. Uh, Fred uh, Reebok is, um, I should say Reebok, mayor. Um, he is the chief financial officer of the State Historical Society. He brought his brother, who flew in from California, to do a tour with me of New Prague. And so the building that that Reebok saloon 
of which we have the bar in the adjacent room, that 26 solid foot mahogany bar in the Giesenbrunn uh, room here, brewery room, uh, came from the, that saloon. In the front of the building on the corner was uh, the confectionery. Originally that building was built by Mr. Penners, German immigrants, he died in 1923 at a very young age, and so it was sold to the Reeboks. Ma Reebok took over the uh, confectionery and the restaurant and the soda fountain, and then the husband took over the back end, and this was during the time of prohibition, and during the time when beer and alcohol consumption was a big, was a big controversy. In fact, in New Prague, there was a time, and I have that on my material here, if I can find it, we had a dry side of New Prague and a wet side. And uh, there was big, a country, one, because New Prague is divided between two counties, and they had to listen to the county uh, seat, uh, Le Sur at that time was uh, designated as a dry side, so none of the bars could serve alcohol on that dry side, and so you had to go across the street to drink beer on the Scott County side. <laughs> but remember that during this time, uh, Sunday was the day of trade. That's when the farmers came into town for church, sometimes, when they were in the rural areas. When they finished their church and they went to mass, they came into New Prague and went to all of the general stores and made their purchases. And every general store had a, a bar. Everyone served beer. <laughs> and uh, that was just, it was just the, the uh, culture. And uh, so, uh, <laughs> uh, they, when, when Prohibition came, then the Reebok family went into bottling um, the, uh, in the, in the bottling works was next to City Hall. I was trying to remember the name of the city for a minute here, apologize for that. I think it's, it's called aging. Anyway, um, so the, when I brought them here to New Prague uh, and gave them the tour yesterday, they gave me uh, a wonderful uh, history of the family and we're very appreciative, I have to say, of what this community has done. When that uh, empty lot on Main Street after, existed after the building burned down, it was just a litter, kitty litter box, sandbox, and stood, it was just disgusting to drive down Main Street and see that empty lot. So as part of the um, committee that was involved in uh, the changes that were done along Main Street, and don't blame me for some of them. Um, we, I lobbied hot, long and hard for that lot to be developed by the city of New Prague. And the city refused because they didn't want to lose uh, tax revenue. So fortunately, um, a couple from New Prague purchased that property, donated the land, and now it's a wonderful uh, kind of an oasis, I would say, along Main Street, bringing some of that green from the park down to Main Street for people to sit and enjoy. As time goes on, that'll be utilized more and more. And it has to be marketed. I can envision seeing small um, music ensembles playing in the, in the summertime, maybe stringing lights above and, and uh, making it a destination for um, the evenings when New Prague is, is, is and businesses are open to the public. Again, I apologize, I just don't have the, the, uh, I should also mention uh, the, uh, the fact that uh, yesterday I was approached by the city of New Prague to discuss a building on in downtown that uh, the city, was, they approached the city to have some reservations and changes made to the building exterior. And when I did my, See, where is it? Okay. My reconnaissance survey, some of the uh, in description of these buildings, the city determined there is going to be some things that the canon cannot do. So this particular business, they refused the building permit because they had changed and wanted to make changes, change the exterior of the building, cover up brickwork, da-da-da-da-da-da-da. 
So the city was very supportive of my and, and uh, my suggestions and my comments, and I was very pleased that the, the uh, city of New Prague is becoming more and more conscious and aware of what a treasure we have downtown. As Southdale has uh, gone through transformation and, and kind of being trying to be reinvented at the Burnsville Center, now it's just practically a dump. I don't know if you've been there recently, but it's not a destination where, and I've talked to people that are kind of afraid to walk through it. Uh, Southtown has changed, and so the mall, we've gone through that cycle in our, in our mercantile culture that malls suddenly have become kind of passe, but small businesses and small downtown communities are becoming more vital and interesting. Take a day trip and go over, 30 minute day trip and go over to Northfield and see all the changes and things happening. Drive to St. Peter and so, see all the wonderful things they've done on their main street. Yes, they're challenging. Each one is totally different, but they offer quality uh, places to eat and to gather to shop, and it adds to the quality of life. And so I applaud the city of New Prague for taking the initiative to say no to some of the requests for change of the buildings because they are part of what makes our community unique. Yeah, they're all different, and we all have gone through periods of time and made the changes in the history, but they are, uh, our, our Main Street is a treasure. Again, excuse me. The uh, who could frit, who for, could forget? Excuse me. The hotel grows. Uh, when I worked with Caroline Amplatz a number of years ago, she somehow got a hold of my name, and I don't mention this to draw attention to myself, but I navigated a lot of the things with her in the beginning of the, the changes of that hotel. First recommendation: tear down the. Uh, the extension of the hotel on the porch and remove that god-awful wart on the building. And so she removed that and brought the building back through photographs in our collection that she was able to, to, uh, to use to bring it back to it, what once probably as close to what it had been. In, in. She removed a lot of the Pitka painting in the interior, retained some of it. She didn't change really the format of the rooms uh, downstairs, and that building has gone through so many, many, many different changes. Uh, her investment of over $11 million in that building was a real gift to New Prague. And regardless of what your opinion is of why she left it and just vacated the project and didn't complete it, uh, she gave the community a wonderful building and uh, to be proud of and so happy today to know that it has been purchased and it'll be brought to continue the business in some fashion or form. It'll never be the same that uh, it was when I came to town and Mrs. Schenkier ran the hotel, uh, or when Mr. The Mosels ran the hotel. And, 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 uh, but it, uh, it's, I remember when John Schumacher ran it, but it's a treasure along Main Street that catches the eye, and everywhere that I have gone, they always remark about the hotel and the rest of Don Schumacher's restaurant. That hotel was designed by a New Prague uh, native. And when the Rahaj family came to New Prague, uh, they were from Bohemia, being born in the 1840s. Um, the oldest, uh, their son, John, no, the first one wasn't John, but the second one was John, he eventually got hooked up uh, as a carpenter working on the state capitol in downtown in St. Paul. And he was a carpenter and he worked on that and he also worked in the James J. Hill House on Summit Avenue. And uh, his son, John Jr., uh, became, uh, was educated at Central High School in St. Paul and eventually was trained by Cass Gilbert, an internationally known and famous American architect, to, uh, uh, he came back to New Prague, met his friends, and he was asked to design a new hotel for Mr. Bros in 1898. Or, of course, that would precede the design. But anyway, uh, John Rockhutch uh, 
completed the Supreme Court building in, in Washington, D.C. for Cass Gilbert after Cass Gilbert died. So if you go to Washington, D.C. today, you'll see John Rockash's name in a brass plaque on the um, corner and the entrance to the Supreme Court building. Another interesting tidbit, and this, uh, when I was working with two Minnesota architectural historians, unbeknownst to them, this Rockach, and he spelled it entirely different, by the way, uh, they were unaware that he came from New Prague. They also told me, as I conversed with them, that one of, one of the panoramic views in this frame piece behind me is in the cornerstone of the state capitol. So when I go to the History Center and I look out that expansive window at the state capitol on the second floor, I really feel a sense of pride. I wasn't born and raised here, but I have spent the majority of my life here, that our community is represented and is uh, in the cornerstone of the state capitol. We played a very important role in it. So the controversy is laid to rest. And in the New Prague Times, it specifically says, and I can point that out to you, um, that uh, John Rockash designed the hotel. It's designed in the, in the Georgian style of architecture, which Cascadeville were used to be build mansions along Summit Avenue in St. Paul. And if you go to the log house and visit us in the log house, you will see the corner cover that was in the Muscle fa uh, family living quarters. Behind the hotel, on the first level, the Muscle family lived with all their children. And I got to know many of those children when I first came to New Prairie because they, through association and friends, and they gave me tidbits of history as an example. When Mr. Russell had a customer that wanted a fried chicken dinner, he would go behind the hotel and butcher one. And then they'd pluck it and clean it, and gut it, and bring it in and make a fresh chicken dinner. <laughs> On, on, week, on weekends, they shut the heat off, so the kids all froze, because the salesman, who they primarily catered to, arrived on Monday on the train, set up their samples in the sample room. So today, if you go into that hotel, you go into the bar area, those were sample rooms. The salesman would set up their samples in those rooms. And then the, the uh, store owners would come in and pick out things they wished to purchase for their store. Then on Friday, the train arrived, they got on the train and went back home. Remember, there were six passenger trains running through New Prague each day. And when you wanted to go downtown to see Santa, or wanted to go shopping at Dayton's, you got on the train in the morning, went downtown, dropped you off the depot, you did your shopping, went out to the Nankin or uh, other or the, the uh, other restaurants in downtown Minneapolis, and then you caught the train home before dark, and and uh, what a wonderful way to escape today's horrific traffic on 35W or 169. So that that corner cupboard is really an interesting uh, uh, piece of furniture. We were able to buy that from uh, a former New Craig resident, and I fundraised for that and uh, found, it's not of the period of the log house, but it's a period, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's history. And this, another photograph I had in my presentation was the International Hotel, where Mr. Prose started as a, uh, uh, his interest and venture in developing a hotel. He was a furniture maker, he was an undertaker, he was a teacher, he, he was a frame maker, he did, he, I have a list, I could count on 10 fingers of the things he did. People were very entrepreneurial, like many people in New Prague. They all had to make a living, so they all found a way to do it. There was no lottery at that time. And you had to make it in an honest and direct way. He lived at the, uh, the, with, you know, with the Proshek family and the International Hotel, which was where the, one of the first telephones and major post office uh, locations was located. And then, that telephone line went to the depot. It went to the Vilonic uh, foundry, which we have a photograph on the table. And uh, it uh, went to Dr. Landberger's office. So when the train wreck occurred between Jordan and New Prague in the early, before 1910, uh, which is the subject of our next exhibit at the library, 
then they this word got around and they were able to be rescued and the hotel became the hospital, the first hospital in the track in Prague. Well, I'm kind of winding things up here. Um, one last uh, thing I want to drop, two last buildings I want to discuss, is the Jacques Saloon. I think I mentioned that um, in the which is the Kalsi Laser Store. And in between the hotel, you'll see a little white building connecting the two brick buildings. That's the Lala Tailor Shop, which was located. Mr. Lala was a tailor. And next door was the Bach Daylight General Store, dry goods store. So in closing, I apologize and I ask your, beg your forgiveness for this thing kind of uh, falling in our laps, but we have to make, uh, it's kind of like uh, life, isn't it? You just have to pick up your, what is that, that old saying? Pick up, pick up your bootstraps and move on and you know, nobody's gonna be there giving you any sympathy. So um, that, is, uh, that is my uh, those comments that I wanna make this evening. And um, do you have any questions? I, I hopefully, I have this wonderful photograph of the 1870 period of Main Street. It's fascinating, all mud. And uh, have you ever passed around? Yes. So the Main Street was all mud. But you know what? People dealt with it. One of the, in, in, one of the individuals that I met this evening was Mr. Young, Young Blood. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, raise your hand. And he brought me and showed me bottles that he dug, uh, digs, has dug, and makes a career out of going into communities and he talks to people and hopefully give him permission to dig in their yards to find the old peck house. Because anything that was, you know, the, the, yes, there was a city dump in New Prague, but the privy in the peck, peck house hall was where you just threw broken china and the old uh, medicine bottles and anything you just didn't want to clutter up your house with. So he brought uh, photographs today of uh, bottles one from the Star Bottling Works, which was a, uh, which was a uh, soda pop bottling works on uh, uh, the west end of the main street. And one of the J.J. Remish medicine bottles. J.J. Remish was not a druggist, but he, he, he had a drug store and hired those individuals who could concoct the medications that the doctors prescribed. So he brought a photograph of that today. So I have his name and number, and so if you have a peck house hole, <laughs> peck house hole in the backyard, <laughs> he can come in the fall or the spring when the ground is soft and take his metal probe and find out the history of your, your home through that uh, depository. And the, uh, you know what a peck house is? Outdoor privy, outdoor bathroom, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but if you have any questions, again, in, regarding any of the photographs, uh, I would appreciate you. I yes. Right, yes. My survey is online. There's, I, had to, I had to publish a certain number of copies. So one is in the library, but you can go online and go through this. And I also want to draw attention to the wonderful uh, buildings uh, display out here this evening, which was done by Deidre Slavic, Mark, Mark Slavic's wife. Uh, she's an employee at the New Prague Times. And she did the, and so when I talk about the changing face of uh, downtown, uh, you can see many of the buildings she painted during the time that she was doing this project have changed. Melgram Jewelers is no longer Melgram Jewelers. Maxie Jane's is now a pet grooming store. <laughs> uh, Pittsburgh Paints, which was the Camarg building, is now vacant, but I, I noticed it's going to be re-leased. Uh, McMahon Drug is now the Snap Fitness Center. Um, New Prague Appliance, that is now that 501 um, restaurant with a nice big patio, what is it called? 105, I just went to, yeah, I've been there once. 105, I got the numbers wrong, sorry. And uh, then the, uh, what is the, mo this is a motel, gun shop, and Mama Do's Cafe, 
uh, is now the, if you want to go smoke, uh, get your uh, tobacco. <laughs> Let's see here. Simon and Simon Liquor Store. That's part of Snap Fitness. I'm dating myself because I remember all this stuff. <laughs> Allen's is now, which was uh, originally part of the Reebok and also the Simon Grocery and Dry Goods business, is now uh, Downtown Sound on the east side. And what do they call that? Uh, what is it? The oh, the bargain store, okay. And then the Sportsman Bar is now, uh, was which was the Makishka, no, the Meshkot Harness Shop originally with the, with the uh, first well in New Prague. That is was filled in now, but it's part of that bar and it's called the, I know I had a, you see, I don't get out much. <laughs> but uh, anyway, but it's, it's the passing of time. One thing I want to draw your attention to, and I'm sure you're getting sick of listening to me, is the First State Bank. When I talked to you about the, the uh, Tchaikovsky Laser Store, Mr. Jacques, the three arches, the entry arches and the side windows, the First State Bank in New Prague, this was Lucille Nikolai's in possession for years and years until I got it, and uh, it's, it also has those three arch, two arch doors, one arch door, excuse me, and the two arch window. And in looking through the books um, about, in, regarding the communities and towns in Bohemia, this is what you see in many of the buildings. This is a direct um, transfer design element that was brought to the New World. And these were Bohemian immigrants, and so they knew what they were doing. Fascinating photograph. And our collection at the Historical Society is deep. We had some wonderful uh, uh, photographers in New Prague, and they did work, their work very diligently. The last one is the Novak Barn and I was able to get a copy of this. So during that time, we, we just, we didn't have a lot of, we relied on people to donate photographs and some things just slipped through the, our fingers. And one was, is the Novak Barn. It has a rich history, Dr. Novak Barn, where we have, uh, is it hy -Vee? It was in the hy -Vee parking lot. So when you go there, if you hear cows mooing, you know why. <laughs> so thank you for coming this evening, I appreciate it. Yeah. All right, so I have two things before we start our trivia, so I'm really sorry I brought three cords, none of them worked with the projector and my computer, so if you guys want to come up and look at the presentation or if you have questions about the pictures we uh, passed around, you can do that, and then we are looking to buy a sound system because one thing we have gotten a lot of feedback on is our sound isn't very good. So we are trialing this. So if you have feedback on if this was good for you to be able to hear, or if you would like us to keep looking for something else, let us know um, just so we can see if this helped. Um, and we're open to contributions. <laughs> we're open to donations, yes. So uh, we have Marsha here. She's going to do trivia, and we have some prizes from Sugar Rose Bakery for the trivia. All righty. I didn't make them too hard. We've got paper on the table. we got pencils. You can work in teams. So your best bet is to look at somebody that's from the gray. That can help you. All righty. All righty. <laughs> OK, here we go. Here's your first question. How many saloons were in New Prague in the 1900s? Just me, yes. So write your answers, and then we'll go over them after we're done. Okay. How many saloons did New Prague have in the 1900s? Okay. Okay. Here's your second question. What was the grand prize at the Fireman's Jamboree in 1952? Okay. Okay. Here's one for you, and you should not get this one wrong. What? 
nonprofit organization was created in September 1983. Whoa, yes, I got that right, yeah. Okay, what organ, nonprofit organization was cr created in September of 1983? 1983. <laughs> I don't do this very often. Okay, let's see. Okay. What became operational on Main Street for the first time in 1978? What? Okay, some of you guys should know this. In 1978, what was the what became operational on Main Street in 1978? What became operational on Main Street? Okay. What local family business has been in the same family longer than any other business? Is that a business? <laughs> okay. What local business has been in the same family longer than any other family business? And it started in November 15th, 1903. Okay. I'll do one more. Okay. Here's our last one. Until 1978, you could purchase a yard of fabric, a dozen eggs, an Ertl farm toy, and a pair of red goose boots. Did I write the answer to that? Yeah. Okay, it was on Main Street. What year? It was in 1978. Okay. No cheating, I'm gonna give you the answers now. Okay, how many saloons in New Prague in 1900? Nine, nine saloons. Okay, what was the grand prize at the Fireman's Jamboree in 1952? A television set. What nonprofit organization was created in September 1983? Yeah! Woohoo! Good job! Okay, what local business has been in the same family longer than any other? What are, what are you saying? No, what? What? Rujax! I did? Yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What became operational on Main Street for the first time in 1978? Stoplight. The stoplight. All righty. And our last one is, until 1978, you could purchase a yard of fabric, a dozen eggs, an Ertl farm toy, and a pair of red goose boots. Where was that and what was the name? Tukowski's. All righty. Okay, so how many did I have? One, two, three, four, five, six? six. All right. Anybody get six right? Okay. Anybody get five right? Four? We got four? Okay, you can come here. their stuff yet? Yes. It's amazing. There's cupcakes from Sugar Rose. You can pick one, whatever one you like. Okay, so what were we at? Four? Three? Four? Anybody got three right? Okay. Ah. Oh. Oh. Who's on a diet? Okay, I've got 
I've got five left. First five, they can come up here. I don't know. Tiebreaker. Tiebreaker. All righty. Thank you, Kristen. Oh, let's make this a really tough one. Um, okay. Oh, the guy should know this. What was the name of the first motion picture theater building in New Prague? What was the name of that building? Okay, is, are these the people that... Okay, who got Savoy right and has gotten... Okay. Come on up. There's one left. How many... Oh, I shouldn't say that because that's going to make everybody say... Okay, I'll do one more. What was the strike force bowling alley before it became a bowl? What was strike force bowling bowling alley before it became a bowling alley? What was it? Dance. Okay, you. I think you said it. You get a cupcake. So does everybody? They did really, really, really good at that. Is there three people that did really well on it? Come on up. Okay, we got two cupcakes left. Dolly, I think you got that one too. So come and get one. One left. Dennis, do you want that for putting on such a good show? He was amazing. I couldn't have done that. So terrible.